Listen for that keyword. We'll get to the pound cake sports break here in a minute as well. It's going to be a beautiful night for a ball game in Houston, Texas tonight. It's going to be 80. Uh, come game time, 8-10 here in Cleveland. It's the third of three Guardians Astros at Minute Maid Park. Uh, and they got one win apiece in this series. So the tiebreaker is tonight. I think Dusty Baker is the skipper for the Astros. Yeah. I remember he was with the Cubs when I first moved back in 06. I think he left at the end of that season. But I, I remember meeting him briefly when he was the manager for the Cubs. But he's kind of made the rounds. So anyway, Guardians, Astros tonight on WMMS. Your FM home for Cleveland Guardians baseball and on the iHeart Radio app, of course. Josh Duggar got 12 years. Is that new news? I know that he was, you know, Josh Duggar is. He was the uh, from that goofy 19 kids and counting. Yeah, yeah, and he turned out to to be a child molester or whatever. Got 151 months, 12 years in federal prison for child pornography conviction. The Duggar family. Not enough. Right? Right. What are you going to do at the end of 12? First of all, he's never going to make it 12 years. Somebody's going to put a sharpened toothbrush handle into his kidneys. Mm -hmm. He's not allowed any computer or electronic devices capable of photographic storage or internet access. You know, the huge. He can't even have contact with his own children. After he gets out, He'll have to um, he'll have to check in with a parole officer for twenty years, and is prohibited from any unsupervised contact with minors, including his own children, who will all be twelve years older. Now, I don't think he's going to do twelve years. I'm only half kidding about him getting <clears throat> shivved, but you would think that I don't know. Do you get out early on a conviction like this for those so. charges? Uh, unfortunately, he probably will. Hmm. Hopefully. <coughs> well, there you go. So, uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So they have uh, 18 other kids that might be okay. Um, message off of the uh, iHeartRadio app. There's a little talkback button. You can drop us quick messages there. Hey, when are you guys supposed to be moving into your new place? Wasn't it supposed to be like end of March or early April or whatever? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> it was supposed to be a lot of things. It was supposed to be October of 2021, but um, the most optimistic estimate that I have heard for people who are, you know, for a while we were kind of goofing around and counting the days down, and that ended quite some time ago, and it became readily apparent that it was not going to happen. The most optimistic estimate that I've heard... And obviously it's not set in stone because nothing is. It's a moving target. It is a, as they say, fluid situation. But what I have heard is that we might be in there the week of the 4th of July. That's what, Ooh. yeah, I think that was in an email or something. Which would be uh, great. Just to get some summer down there, I think would be, you know. be cool. Because every day I'm reading about, like, they're putting these new restaurants in downtown and, you know. Right, you want to get there before they close. <clears throat> <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, I don't know. That would be cool if we were down there for that. Uh, well, I need to get down there and see what, what they've made a lot of um, uh, they've made a lot of um, improvements, I guess, in installing things, and I just haven't been down there. I what was the estimate that you said, Alan? I, I said the, the most optimistic estimate that I've been told most recently is the week of the 4th of July. We might be down there in broadcast. That's literally the week I'll be in Vegas. <laughs> That's the week of 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that might be the week that we're down there. And you'll be gone. And Corey you, Roddick sitting in. That's right. Yeah. And they'll be like, just don't, just don't come Corey, back. Corey. <laughs> Corey Roddick. So that's going to be, uh, listen, he's filled in to great acclaim before. He's awesome. So why not? It was only a couple of days. He but those days were, job. oh, they were paradise. I mean, it seemed like a month, but not in the bad way. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like the good way, you know? You didn't have any issues at all? Hell no. He's the a goddamn were, professional. The issue we were having was we were having too much fun. Too much fun was the issue. 
<laughs> so you know what the issue is? I got to dial this back a little bit because when Pound Cake comes back, I don't want to have that, you know, love that Joker. I don't want to have that perma smile on my yeah. face. That's really going it, to, it's going to cut into the young man's confidence. And I didn't want to do that. It was a temporary situation. But um, boy, he, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. And he um, availed himself uh, very ably here. And of course, I mean, like I said, uh, he's a professional. God, Bill, I remember it like it was yesterday, really. I mean, my... <laughs> so funny and so fun and just you know, he's always in Coherent engaging. sentences. Mm-hmm. If we were talking about, about rock and topic. roll, I mean, he, he and I were at the same level with the rock and roll. I mean, he could always add more detail that, you, you know, I mean, listen, the bar was said, I said, do you listen? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll listen. It's like, great. <laughs> You'll listen during the show? And he looked at me like he couldn't believe I was like, asking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He goes, of course, why wouldn't I listen during it's the like show? And thing. I go, I know, right? And, oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, if you're gone that week, and you will be, you'll be, be in Las Vegas. Um, <clears throat> it will be back here. I bet we could figure out a way to get Corey in the room with us to screen the calls even. <laughs> <laughs> Just back in the corner with a phone bank on his yeah. lap? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, we'll see. Poundcake, do you are you ready for the sports break? Maybe Corey should do it. <laughs> what did he say? Maybe Corey Corey should do it. <laughs> I'd never give him something that silly to do. Yes, I'm ready. Play ball. This is a pound cake sports break. In the headlines today, NBA Clippers player Norman Powell was harassed harassed by some Karen while streaming on social media. Apparently, it was unwarranted and completely random, but that's what you get for waking up in Vegas. Apparently, the woman approached him saying she got into a fight. He was caught off guard and called the police. The woman continued to berate him during his live stream and said he was un-American. The woman was arrested, and now Powell will never again have to ask, where are white women at? Also, speaking of white women, men... Would you change your name to make your relationship more balanced? Because that's exactly what former Dolphins player Ricky Williams did. Uh, I'm sorry. Now he's Eric Mirren. Ricky, whose birth name was Eric, is Eric, changed his last name to his wife's last name to add more balance so his wife didn't feel overshadowed by him. (laughs) Sweetie, your wife is giving you that good apple pie. Overshadowed by you? Come on, man. And lastly, 49ers defensive lineman Javon Kinlaw laid down the law on uh, Grant Cohn's YouTube channel, calling the reporter a little D N word and stop playing with me. <laughs> Woo! That is a trigger warning for some of y'all. Apparently, Javon did not like how Cohn criticized him and his teammates, and he was going to tell him all about it. Uh, and I don't know who books these interviews, but I feel like this is a publicist's worst nightmare, but I'm here for it. I'm all for the trauma. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this Pound Cake Sports Break. Play ball! This is a Pound Cake Sports Break! Man, it's funny. I didn't hear that Ricky Williams story. Yeah, changed his last name. That's how you know that guy smokes a lot of weed. Yeah. He's the guy that smokes so much weed that they're like, you can't play in the NFL. And he's like, all right, I'll go Canada. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll yeah. go make I'll tons of money in marijuana. Smoke weed every day. And I'll be fine. You know what, babe? I should take your last name. Yeah. I said something to that effect to my boyfriend the other day. We were laying on the couch watching TV. And um, I was messing with him, and I got all cuddly, and I was like, well, you don't want to be Mr. Mary Santoro one day? And he's like, Brian get, Slamdora? Get off of me. Absolutely not. <laughs> Are you the Brian Santora? <laughs> Dude, uh, would that ever be a consideration in your mind, Alan, that you would take Gwen's last name? No, I told her she didn't have to take mine. That was his thing. Is yeah. It was like, keep whatever you na- name you want, but I'm not taking your name, you psycho. <laughs> right. Well, my wife's Polish, so her last <laughs> name is like a, her, <laughs> yeah. a solid line yeah. of consonants. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going from like 13 letters to three. But um, I said, you don't have to do that. And she goes, well, I won't right away. But she goes, but I want to. And I said, okay, that's totally fine. I'd do that if the girl's last name was Bill. Bill Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I, just do, I just do Bill and then a little two. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bill squared. Mm-hmm. My ex-wife still Bill uses pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> my ex-wife still uses my name. Yeah. Because and she's, she's been remarried and re-divorced because of the kids. That's right. Did she take 
she didn't take her new husband's last name at all. You know what she did? Hyphen. She hyphenated it with mine and his. Whoa. Yeah. So none of it's hers. Uh uh-uh. uh. My mom did that. She doesn't use her um she doesn't use her now, when my daughter graduates, um, we're gone the rest of the week because my daughter graduates high school tomorrow night. Aww. So when they're both at college, I don't know. Maybe she'll go back to it. But like, I got the invitation for the commencement, and it was addressed to the Cox family. And then the return address stamp on the back said the Cox family. It like threw me off for a second. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, I see what's going on. What I, timeline is this? <laughs> do you think you're going <laughs> to... The multiverse! <laughs> I, I called your bluff when you said you weren't going to cry when you moved your son into his college dorm. I didn't cry. You said you did cry. Mm, no, you said I cried. No, I said you're going to cry. You told everyone else. You swore up and down that you wouldn't. No, I don't and think I then, cried. I said I cried. When yes. I, uh, I don't recall that. Well, well, the listeners, they, they remember everything. And okay. They'll, they'll yeah, find they it. Seats, you yeah. told me that you cried in the dorm when you were moving your son in. You got teary-eyed, uh, teary-eyed in the dorm and you cried a little bit on the way home. That's what you said. Now we'll- Really? Yes. Boy, I don't remember that at all. I know you don't. Maybe I was playing it up. Maybe. Mm. But what about your daughter? Will it be any different when she graduates and you see her like in her cap and gown? Are you going to cry? I don't know about that. My daughter's awesome. So it's like I, I'm so excited for her to get going. And, you know, she, she's going to the College of Music at Michigan State and this whole thing, which is all she ever wanted. And Same she, college as your son? <clears throat> well, Michigan State. He's, he's over at the School of Engineering, but she's in the, uh, the College of Music. Which is technically part of the university, but they kind of leave them alone, so they're also kind of technically like their own thing. Hmm. It's like their own ecosystem within the university, but um, no, I don't know about that. I mean, I can tell you that I don't think I've ever seen a single vocal performance by her where I kept a dry eye. Every time I see her sing or perform, I get, yeah, teary. But uh, I don't know that... I don't know. She's that bad and she's choosing it as a career? Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Shut up. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> but I think that um, I will be more worried about her at college. I wasn't worried about my son going to college. I'm a, you know, my, she's a teenage girl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. Well, that's why you have your son. I'm glad they're going to the same university because your son could look out for her some, right? Yeah, but I don't know how much they're going to cross paths. I mean, I'm sure they will. Listen, I imagine my ex-wife, now that they're both going to be in Lansing, she'll probably be up there all the time. But, um because it's not that far from where they live. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll I, see. My brother was the older brother, and I had to look out for him when he came to visit me in college. But why is that? Because we still because he lost his... I got the college experience, so me going out and drinking for a night was no big deal to me. He didn't he, go to college? He didn't go to college. Okay. And so when he came to visit me, he was having his college experience at my expense. It was my 21st birthday, and we still talk about it to this day. It, it's, it's like the running joke. He was like face down in a pile of mulch for no reason. <laughs> There's <laughs> always so a reason to be face down in a pile of mulch. He, he was like falling every so often. And I was like, I, you can't come down here anymore because I, you are too big to carry home. He's a big guy. I'm not carrying him home. And he needed to, to be monitored. He was just like, I can out drink anybody here. I'm like, right. So you had to be his wingman. <laughs> yeah. I was on like, campus. You're, you're not this dude. Like you're not that guy. You don't drink well. He was trying to pull numbers, and because I was gay and cute, I was getting numbers with ease. And he was like, man, this ain't even fair. Like, Yeah, but you were going for guys, he was going for girls. No, I was getting girls' numbers. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah, and he was mad. Um, I would think a heavier guy would be able to handle his booze. It doesn't mean anything. He was really? T- Your weight doesn't really have anything to do with it. <laughs> really? It's your tolerance, and actually alcohol can affect fat cells more than it can muscle sometimes. It absorbs more. Wow, and okay. I, I think... He's used to getting drunk with beer. I don't think he's used to taking shots. And this was my yeah, shots will do it. That'll knock you out. This was my twenty first birthday. So he's like, "Let me buy you whatever you want." And I'm like, this, "I was in my blue mf'er phase, and so I'm having a couple of those. I'm people are buying me shots. I'm having uh, flaming Dr. Peppers. Just <laughs> just any type of alcohol you can mix. I was mixing, and he was like. <laughs> And so that was just the pregame. We were at the bars for the pregame. Now it's time for the house party, and we had to walk home. <laughs> and he just, he was tripping over cracks in the sidewalk. He was face down in mulch. He was knocking over trash cans. <laughs> he just wasn't a good drunk to hang out with. Couldn't handle his high. Exactly. Let me give you $1,000 here. It's the last chance today for you to go fund yourself. So listen closely. Good luck. <laughs> The Buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score $1,000. 
Enter the nationwide keyword pay at WMMS.com. That's pay. Enter it now at WMMS.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. Mm-hmm. Alan, is it bad if I'm doing pound cake voices to myself when I get to hit the pen? <laughs> you better enjoy yourself. Uh-huh. Hey, <laughs> I'm all out. So I haven't been hitting the pin. You're all out. What does that mean? I don't have a cartridge. You, you, don't you just get a new one? He yeah. doesn't. I haven't got one yet. Oh. I thought people kept like. I got one. Uh, I'll give it to you. Just Venmo me $300 and it's a whole bunch of them. It's yours. Three hundred dollars. I have some old yeah. gummies you can have. I found them in a suitcase. Yeah, I got some. In a too. suitcase. I hadn't taken my. Still very potent. Well, I hadn't taken my. Why don't you want them? I stopped. Uh, I haven't been high in over a year. I stopped smoking weed and getting high. What you say? You're going completely. I'm. I'm friggin' straight edge, bro. Ugh. I know. Yeah. I What's the matter with that? I haven't been high in a very long time. Um, I have. So it's been at least a year since I've taken my large suitcase with me, and I took it to Salt Lake City. And when I was packing it, I found like a half thing. I was like, I bet these are still good. They're hard, but I bet they're still good. I mean, yeah. you can have them if you want them. Yeah, I'll take them. Yeah. I just said, Ben, me that $300 and I got a bunch of stuff for you. No, I want to know what it is. It's a bunch of stuff. It'll be good. You'll like it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like It'll a screwdriver no. and uh-huh. just go no. ahead and masks. send me that money. Yep. <laughs> send that money on over. And <laughs> Some old Dr. Scholl's inserts. Right. Be a bunch just of stuff. At Bill Squire, come on. You need paper clips, right? <laughs> be fine. You need a bunch of old uh, Indians giveaway stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alan, you said you got to your car and lost it after you dropped off your son. You've denied this before. I'll take your word for it. I genuinely do not remember that. Play but the I'll, tape. I'll take, That's what I'm saying. I, from three and a half years ago. <laughs> well, we have it. I uh, I posted a joke about have it when my eye went out, and someone asked, like, where's the video? I'm like, it's on YouTube. Search Bill's eye. And they went and watched it, and they're like, you were really calm for that whole thing. I was like, well, we have a show to do. Yeah, that's right. The show must go on. So exactly. you write that down. That should be a thing. I didn't even leave the show that day. I, went, I finished the show, and then I went to the doctor the next day, and that's when they're like, go to the hospital. Now, I work in the inventory department for a school district. These kids not only leave poop in the toilets, they rip the toilets off the floor. Had a few situations where they stood in the urinals and jumped until they came off the wall. Man, kids are dicks. It said we're sourcing prison-grade toilets and sinks and urinals. We're underfunded already, and the vandalism really hits our budget very hard. That's bananas. Like, mm. yeah, I was never into destruction. I wasn't like either. Like Alan, I, I, I have a, a smart ass, but I wasn't going to like destroy a toilet. No, I have a 27 year old stepson who won't flush. The bathroom is next to his bedroom. He just continues to pee out of his second store. Second floor bedroom window. What is wrong with this person? Is he demented? Well, he's 27 and still living with his parents, so maybe something's going on anything. there. I mean, hmm. I know a lot of 27 year olds that still live with their parents. You're saving you money. do? Are they peeing yeah. out their window, though? Because that's another right. level. That's what I said. The, he's I, I can see you might know one or two. You know a lot of 27 so year olds? I know so a handful. Many. Really? There's, oh, they're okay. saving money. Oh, I don't know. I know I love saving money, and some people do, but then they move out. <laughs> saving money for what? Hey, my nephew finally got a job. Hey! Nice. Yeah, remember when he lived with me three months ago? And he mm-hmm. said he was going to get he, one. What's he but doing? he got one. He got one. He's working on an uh, online call center. So okay. So Sammy can do from home from his computer. So that's as of like last week. I you don't better know have if he's that still incognito doing window it. ready. Right, they yeah. So he's not getting like any graphic design work. I thought you said that's what he did. Or does. I think that was or he's just, Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't see visual evidence of his work? No. Oh. I'm not going to put him on blast because I don't know if my sister's listening. But he told me some things that led me to believe that that wasn't how he was I making see. his money. Okay. Yeah. I thought I was going to be a professional masturbator and that didn't work <laughs> out. Nobody wanted to pay me for that. All right. Well, that's something. something. That's good. Step in the right direction. He's gainfully employed. Correct. Living with the grandparents? Still living with the grandparents. Okay. But well, maybe he'll got be a job. saving some money as we'll pancakes. See what says. happens. I'm saving up. I just remember all the people <laughs> I knew that like lived with their I'm saving up. And then they'd like go to Ibiza or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you saving up for? <laughs> for an apartment. Writing they their name those... on the orange juice. I'm yeah. like, oh my God. Get it together. 
We want those memories. Right. All right, I'm going to break. If you want to get a text for anything, 35192, you can leave us messages on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7. WMMS. Rover's Morning Glory.